The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. Welcome all to another exciting edition of our As always, we'd love to hear from you. Well, that's why we should have tested it before the show. Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on today? Well, that's uh, in the cable. I hear myself perfectly. Um, what else do we have on here? Well, we're flat on the S&P cash. And down about 12 points upon the Dow. Don't have a lot of stuff going on. And uh, the NASDAQ talked about 65 points. Russell up 12. So, uh, still thinking that maybe that trade deal doesn't come uh, as soon as many people think. At least that's my read on why Russell will probably be uh, outperforming a great deal of the rest of the indexes. As we look in the uh, uh, volume today, again, way, way underneath uh, anything that would approach a breakout with a volume or a sign of strength breaking through the all time highs. 3.8 billion shares as we start the show. And, uh, okay, let's do this. Say you can't hear me. Let's see if you can do this. That's me. They keep moving everything around here on Skype. Um, we'll see about this. Okay. Video settings. Yeah. Um, How about that? Does that sound a little better? Maybe that is that. I bet that sounds a lot better now. As we go back on here, occasionally um, they do it. Uh, for some reason, we weren't able to taste test the microphone before the show. Uh, but uh, that's it. Yeah, occasionally uh, the uh, Skype decides to update its settings, and it wants to use the microphone on my on my uh, camera. But I got this nice, expensive microphone in front of me that makes me say sound, at least to myself, uh, like somebody. So I like it. Anyway, uh, we'll go back through it now that everything is working. Uh, we're uh, up you know, a couple of points on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's up uh, about 15. NASDAQ's off four. Russell's up about 12. And, of course, we're talking about uh, actually getting... Um, a lot of juice in the Russell, making me think that a lot of people think that that trade deal is not just around the corner, uh, that they're voting with their dollars and that's it. Uh, when we look at volume in the market, uh, we can't even or can't even get to 3.8 billion shares on the uh, CBOE, vol, uh, uh, CBOE can, uh, combined volume for all the tapes, which is pretty pretty tough. We need, or we were looking for something like in the 10 to 12 billion range. We've been averaging somewhere around six or seven billion. Now, if you just hang out here long enough, maybe you can chew through the high volume that we've had at these previous highs, but that'd probably take another week or 10 days, I think. Um, just too many stocks also failing up here at these levels makes me think that um, what you want is the market uh, if you want a signal and want the market to go higher right now, then that market will probably go up there and fail and it will take a long time to get back. 
If you're bullish, I think you want a retreat on light volume and yet another run to come up here and break these highs on high volume. Um, what you don't want is uh, just kind of sitting around here with no volume at highs. Generally a good sign of distribution in the market. So what else do we have? That's uh, at least part of it. Uh, and of course, uh, what we're keeping a close eye on this week because of all the fireworks is the dollar. It's down 22, 23 cents today at 97.69. Uh, so you're coming off a little bit of that high. You know, we, we really for the last year, the government, the Treasury has really tried to push this between about 95 and 97. We're on the high side now. I suspect that they'll pull whatever levers they can to get it back down into that range. But we'll see in the next couple of days whether or not the market is actually bigger than the Treasury and uh, the government. Of course, the ability to print money means that you can always make your money worth less. But uh no problem right now, uh, as I like to put in the den every once in a while. No matter what you call it, greenbacks, turnips, Benjamins, as long as it says, in God we trust on it, that's what everybody in the world wants. Uh, except uh, some people, uh, silly enough to buy into Bitcoin, uh, they saw all of their profits disappear uh, in an instant on, on uh, last night. Uh, they're calling it a little flash crash. I'm calling it a little bit of a reality check, or BitCon, as I like to call it. You can call me at 877-927-6648. You can always put a message in the den. And, of course, you can, uh, put a, uh, well, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, I don't know. I have not heard it. Somebody in the den's asking me whether or not that the uh, Zai's, Z's, Zai's president, Z, Zai, but I don't want to call him a president. And he's basically a dictator at this point, uh, as conciliatory as financial TV is hyping. I don't know, um, but uh, you can never tell. Let's do a little history. And then we'll get into uh, some charts and some other things throughout the day. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1954, the salt pal uh, polio uh, vaccine field trials involving 1.8 million children began at the uh, Sherman Elementary School in McLean, Virginia. Children in the United States, Canada, and Finland uh, participated in the trials which used for the first time the now double standard and double blind method where either the or with neither the patient nor the attending doctor knew if the inoculation was the vaccine or placebo. On April 12, 1955, researchers announced the vaccine was safe and effective and quickly became the standard part of childhood immunization. Of course, uh, I was born uh, far, far, far and on a distant planet uh, away from that. But uh, I always remember that uh, the post office hired a lot of people that had had polio. And my mailman was one. He even just lived down the street. But, but uh, I always thought, why, where did the polio thing come from? Why did only old people have it? Well, vaccines, not as bad as you would think. A lot of morons now kind of going against vaccines. They can be very safe and effective. We'll be back after this. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, we're going to go through some of the earnings and give a little commentary along the way. Uh, where's my earnings here? And go through it. Um, is this right? I hope it's right. Did I get this? We should see Intel in this. Yep, it's right. Just wanted to make sure I had the right day. American Airlines opened lower, closed the gap today. Um, volume's okay. And I think uh, at least the last round of Baker Hughes rig counts were lower. Uh, again, if you read the commentary, it's all about uh, many of these rigs closing for Easter weekend. So you get a few of them that are actually set down. From now on, if my theory is correct and that we've seen peak oil prices but not peak oil, then we probably should uh, see the crude continue down probably back into the low 50s, I suspect. Uh, but we've gone through the changeover from the winter summer formula. Uh, we've gone through all the maintenance on most of these. And short of a hurricane, I don't see a lot of reasons to think that oil supply, at least in the United States, is going to be, uh, is going to matter much. And, uh, and we'll see. ADM, supermarket to the world, apparently on sale today, down uh, to $40.39 at the low, but a lower. And it uh, looks like it's going to break through the previous low of 4 million shares on July 7th. Uh, with uh, a little more volume today, 39.16 looks like this one is headed there. Uh, kind of interesting to see with all the discussion of the floods uh, that uh, it doesn't seem to ring true in the markets. And the markets are the arbiters. And generally, they're right. Most of the time, 85%, well, they're going to be right over time. Aflac. I had earnings out. Giant, giant doji out here. I don't know what you can make about that other than the fact, uh, eh, another company like that. Applied Industrial Technology, AIT, uh, down. Uh, volume's not as bad as you would think, but 55.94 looks like the next target. Uh, Alaskan Air uh, Group opened uh, pretty much where it closed yesterday. Uh, nice little almost bullish engulfing candle on the Alaskan Air Group. Generally higher prices in crude, 
would mean that you'd see lower prices in the airlines. So you can watch those for confirmation. Amazon, just slightly higher out here today. Uh, very interestingly, uh, I was looking through the short data which came out, uh, which is the bi-monthly short data. I also talk about on this program looking uh, at the uh, stock data uh, with daily short data from FINRA. And it was very interesting to see just uh, since the numbers came out, how far the shorts actually dropped in Amazon over the last 15 day reporting period. Uh, last time on the 29th report, uh, the, on the 29th of uh, April, you had, uh, to, or excuse me, 29th of March, you had, uh, is that four, I want to make sure I got that right. 4.7 million shares of Amazon short. It dropped to uh, two and a half million shares. So a lot of people got out. There isn't a whole lot. And that's one of the reasons why probably, although the earnings look good, you didn't get that much of a bounce. Uh, there aren't that many people left. But one of the things I will tell you is that you want to watch very specifically these stocks that have had big runs when the short numbers actually drop in half. Now, at the highs back on uh, late November, he had 5.6 million shares short. Uh, that we're now down at about uh, 2.5 million shares means that there really aren't a lot of people left to run in Amazon uh, for the short sellers. Uh, on a daily basis, um, you have about, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 13 percent. Seems to be kind of a run rate a couple of weeks ago. You had some people coming after it, it got up to about 20 percent on one day. But again, you don't know on those daily numbers whether or not the people held them or they cashed out that day. You're going to have a certain amount in every stock that's going to kind of be a base rate, and that is the option market makers trying to keep a market going. By the end of the day, they will clean those short positions out so you know that there's some base level. So what you're really looking at is kind of uh, you want to see the peaks and the troughs in this where there's very little people either shorting or, or everybody shorting, and you kind of tell what the standard run rate is, but, uh, uh, you know, you, you had a few a couple weeks ago, but they're all out, and that's about it. But uh, what you don't see is generally these stocks continue to run very hard if there aren't any shorts left to squeeze. Shorts on the wrong side are some of the best medicine that a stock can have for driving higher prices. And when I hear about CEOs complaining about short positions on their stock, the best way to do that is make your company much better. There's a reason that people are shorting your stock. Um, things don't look good. And uh, it's probably your fault. Maybe something you can't avoid. But I don't think if it was something you can't avoid, like your headquarters got hit by a meteor or something, then I don't think you can complain. But uh, that's just me. AstraZeneca. Uh, went up to $43.30 on March 1st, been going down since then. It has finally come back and filled this double gap. Um, if you're really interested in stocks like this, this is what I like, but uh, you want to see. Not much volume today. You might find something. Um, I was along this stock because it had such low volume at the lows, uh, but I had a very short stop, and I think I lost 50 cents on a $25 stock, so no a big deal on this, and that, I think that was a week or two ago. But it never had the volume. Now, it actually did close up before earnings uh, yesterday, back into the trading range. Uh, didn't feel like uh, taking another swing at it, but it was one of the better-looking stocks. Got to 27.26. This is not as medical equipment. They make a lot of stuff for babies. I guess maybe everybody's thinking that babies are back in vogue these days. Let's see what else is out here that I want to look at. Uh, Capital One, COF, a nice little pop here today into the previous highs. Now, this one, you wanted to see something like two, two and a half million shares. Got uh, 2.9 so far. It's not a blowout, but it certainly gets you back into the 90s. And I don't like shorting stocks in the 90s because they almost always go to 100. Uh, what else do we have? Cabot Oil and Gas, a little pop in this one. I think they do a lot of uh, natural gas stuff. There's a little pop on that one. CVX, which is uh, Chevron, 
uh, back into this support area. Uh, that comes from the gap up on February 1st. 11 million shares on that day. You got back into it so far today with 7.7 uh, .7 million shares. So not a blowout to the downside. Comcast had earnings out before the bell today. Did go higher uh, and retreated pretty much back to where it closed yesterday on almost no volume. So again, we're continuing to wait for these signs of double repo patterns, uh, but don't have one. Uh, there's that. Let's go to here. Grubhub, another one. We have time. Uh, this one kind of interesting in that it had a great open up to 77.49 and has been selling off pretty much the rest of the day. So um, good earnings uh, and finding a lot of people that want to sell it almost instantly. 63.31 is the last low. I suspect it's back there fairly quick. Be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're going to go to uh, John in Philly. How are you doing today, John? Good afternoon, David. Uh, thanks for taking the call. David, I wanted to ask you about the business prospects for Qualcomm. Uh, by way of background, uh, I reference the uh, terrific job you started doing way back like the start of the second quarter of 2018, so over a year ago, describing its, uh, its uh, power in its development and patent portfolio and how uh, its um, 
uh, product development lineup that would be uh, embedded into 5G phones whenever they get rolled out were really powerful. And then, of course, back on Tuesday, April 16th, there was that uh, agreement right as a, a, a settlement, uh, right as a trial between Apple and Qualcomm was uh, just starting. A uh, settlement was agreed to, and the stock is spiked. But I'm wondering if you can just describe conceptually what you can foresee happening in the next couple of quarters with the business itself, please. Uh, well, uh, certainly Samsung, I think, announced yesterday, maybe it was this morning, can't remember, that their next uh, phone will have 5G in it for its flagship uh, phones. So we're, we're going to start seeing those uh, chips uh, ship fairly quick. It's not just Qualcomm with their 5G chips. They have something else up their sleeve, too, and that is if you hold the phone in a certain way with 5G, you can block all the signal. So they had to come up with a design for an antenna that will work no matter where you put your hand on the phone. And uh, they have that. And that may even be worth more than the the actual modem chip that goes in the phone because someone's going to have to figure out a way to get around it. I always said that one of the things you don't want to be involved in is the black arts, and that's radio frequency stuff. Digital stuff like I was in, it's either on or off. Maybe there's some interference and stuff, but uh, it's, you know, pretty, it's not easy, but at least it's straightforward figuring stuff out. Uh, when you get to radio frequency stuff, there's all kinds of propagation issues and everything else. And you just don't, you know, when Intel said they were getting into it, you just don't do that overnight. You don't go from an analog uh, radio frequency kind of stuff to a digital frequency kind of stuff. And, of course, they've had all the patents on it. Now they got all the patents on 5G, too. So they got the old patents and the new patents. Um, I think that there's something even bigger afoot, uh, and I, I guess it's slowly filtered out to me. Uh, and that was uh, the argument between Apple and Qualcomm, in which Apple was actually getting ready to try to defraud uh, the court. Uh, they were out buying uh, uh, basically worthless patents in this field. And we're going to claim that they were all kinds of stuff. I mean, they were buying these patents for like a thousand bucks or something, and they literally didn't wouldn't hold any water whatsoever. And uh, apparently, this whole thing with Intel dropping theirs and uh, getting into Qualcomm happened extremely fast. Uh, when the judge basically said, uh, "Hey, I'm going to fry you." Uh, I'm going to fry you like some uh, French fries at McDonald's over this if you continue to push this kind of crap. And <laughs> actually, I, I saw some it. more stuff this morning about it. Uh, but they've been uh, basically someone ratted them out now uh, and today and found out that Apple was planning this uh, uh, shenanigans over two years ago. So they want what they wanted to do is try to bust. Uh, Qualcomm's patents. And when the judge, I, I guess, Qualcomm actually said, hey, we've got somebody that's going to, uh, they announced their witnesses, and they added this guy at the last, and that was it. Within 18 hours, uh, Intel was out of the business, and uh, Qualcomm was back, and they didn't really negotiate too much from the existing patent uh, uh, formula, which is based on price which is why Apple got so mad in the first place. Apple thought, well, you know, we're building $400 phones. We'll sell this uh, we'll sign this licensing agreement, and we'll be happy. Well, now they're paying twice that or more to uh, Qualcomm because they're charging 1000 bucks for the phone, and they don't think that they should or didn't think that they should. But they knew what they signed up front, and this decided that hook or crook, they were going to get out of it. Um, and at the same time, if they could destroy Qualcomm, then they could be like Walmart going around crushing anybody that even tried to act like they had pricing power. Uh, so uh, David, that all. I, I just have all, to interject what that story you're referring to on Apple's tactics. It sounds like the sort of material that would make uh, the basis of a fabulous John Grisham novel. It, it, it is kind of a little bit like that, but no one get, got killed. At least that we know of. 
But, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of starting to leak out. Um, and I, you know, it's Apple's kind of gone up here on, you know, it was 140 bucks. Now it's 200 bucks. I never understood the rain uh, run from 140 to 200. They say that they weren't going to have uh, phones till maybe next year uh, with 5G in them. And I'm wondering whether or not they kind of saw this thing coming. And we're already telling people like Buffett that own shares that we'll have a 5G phone by the end of this year anyway. And they were probably thinking that it was going to be Intel. And then Intel told them, you know what, it's going to be at least another three or six months after we told you until those, uh, the modems are ready. And much less getting a, uh, a, um, a patent that would pass theirs for the antenna, which I think right now may even be the bigger issue. In the, at least gotcha. in the Thank short term. I appreciate all that uh, background and input. Can I uh, lastly ask you, just to make a wild guess, um, in the next couple of quarters, uh, would you guess that uh, Qualcomm's uh, sales ramp will be sufficiently quick uh, where uh, people who have bid the stock up over 75 and 85 uh, won't get disappointed and sell the stock back off? Mm, I can't say that, but I can say that maybe they'll hold it for the promise of next year. Uh, there is something I'm going to try to find here while we're on the air. Maybe I can find it. Maybe I cannot. Uh, but I'm looking for this. And that David, is... I'm going to give you a, a, a real-time... Uh, news entry just on this very subject. I'm just looking at a Bloomberg television screen. And uh, the news that is breaking that uh, you always uh, 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 you always uh, tend to try to fix is the headlines this. Apple discussed buying Intel's smartphone modem chip unit. Source being the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> They, they, they're going to try to do anything they can. I don't think that they can. I don't think they can do it. I mean, they, they've, there's like eight countries that you can't ship an iPhone into right now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, the thing is, when you get into a business like this, especially for Qualcomm, uh, and you get 150,000 patents over 20 years, pretty, you pretty much know the patent business. <laughs> You, you know so how much, to David. write uh, good patents, and they did. We'll be back after this. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Well, I was going to show this uh, at uh, 3.30 with Tom O'Brien, but we'll bring it up twice. And uh, this is a bell curve called the technology adoption like uh, uh, life cycle. So when John was asking about Qualcomm and early adopters and innovators, um, a very small portion of the m money that's made is going to be in the first year, year and a half of 5G. It's what happens in the next five years after that. Uh, and this is, you know, they've done a lot of studies on various products, and it seems almost, um, almost uh, like a, a, a proverb uh, of how close this curve and the amount of money that's made in technology actually uh, it actually happens uh, with the percentages that are listed on this chart, uh, and. For the, you know, we don't, I think we've had the first 5G cell towers up. There's only a hand kind, uh, hand uh, full of phones out there. And again, we're probably looking at uh, May to June when the Samsungs come out. So that's really first. And uh, you've got a handful of cities, about five. Uh, and Manhattan, where they're really going to be probably the uh, first million is going to be the easiest to get. Then you got a handful of other cities where they're really kind of testing uh, how this works and where they need to put the um, towers. Uh, there are going to be a lot more of them. They're going to be a lot lower powered. But uh, uh, if you ever want this, this is uh, one of the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's become kind of a uh, rote that everybody actually believes exactly what this is, but it's all uh, some of the uh, John Christensen's. Uh, uh, books on innovation and technology where he went back and researched it when he was a college professor. Uh, but it works very well. Uh, now, one of the things I want to point out here uh, is this big flag that says the chasm, the key to accelerating NG111 adoption, uh, where there's a key here. And this is where most new technology fails uh, or new technology companies fail, maybe is a better way to put it. And when you talk about uh, new technology, let's say, let's talk about Tesla today, uh, that's about where Tesla is. Now, we can look at the rest of the amount of money that's going to be made in that industry over time, uh, and we're probably just past and into the early adopters, maybe about 10%. But that's when a lot of companies actually blow up and the risk is absolutely the highest. That is where you go from being a boutique company to trying to actually produce stuff at scale. And that is when so many companies blow up. Uh, generally, it's a little bit uh, easier once you get into the uh, early majority of people buying products uh, because generally the risk is far, far less. Now, Facebook was exactly at that chasm point when they went public at 40 bucks. And what they didn't have was a way to make money. They had a lot of people, and they eventually found it. 
But that's why the stock IPO'd at 40 bucks and went to 20. They never really knew what they were going to do on how they were going to make money. And that was a tough, tough time to see the stock drop 50% on a company that was growing like a weed but couldn't make a dime. And uh, that's it. But, uh, you know, generally, if you can find stocks on sale, that's where your risk is going to be the lowest if they kind of blow up. Uh, if you're trying to take a flyer or buy a, uh, a option on it. Uh, but once you get into the early majority stuff, then it's kind of that. So as far as 5G, uh, which is what started this discussion, uh, we're kind of really in that innovators part where the first two and a half percent of the money that's ever going to be made on 5G is probably going to be made. And that probably is not going to get into the early adopters till late this year, or maybe the first part of next year. Then we start looking. But the reason that the stocks get bid up is that they know that Samsung and Qualcomm uh, have their ducks in a row, they have the poop in a basket, whatever you want to call it, and that early majority money is going to dwarf anything in the next six months. So they're not too worried about it. They want to be in that for the long term. They just thought that maybe Qualcomm wasn't going to be part of it. I never understood the argument that with 12% of the phones – uh, being sold, that Apple was that big a deal, other than the fact that maybe that'd be early adopters. Uh, but I still don't think that there's a lot there. Anyway, uh, basically, when you look at it, 68% of the profit is made once they get past uh, what they call an innovation, the chasm. That's where you go from being small and producing things to actually hiring legions of people and producing huge amounts of product, uh, project, product uh, that ends up hitting the market. Um, anyway, uh, we'll talk more about that uh, with Tom O'Brien today, because uh, we're going to be talking all things uh, in autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles and all that kind of stuff, because there's a lot of news on them this week, and I'm going to give you my opinion on it. Um, yes, the Samsung phones will have the Qualcomm chips. So uh, that's, I think, why uh, you kind of see that that's a little bit better. But I mean, I don't know. I just don't understand why Apple is some while, why it's a very small percentage of the market. Why everybody, I think there's kind of a myopic view of Wall Street, which is Apple, their cell phones, they make all the money. But at the same time, there's, 88% of the market that we ignore because it's not Apple. And I don't know. I don't understand those guys a lot of times. Uh, but I do make money when they go on the wrong side of that market. Uh, what's your short and long-term uh, outlook on Home Depot if the market is going lower? Um, I did not like to see today that, uh, that uh, Mohawk Industries had a big, kind of nasty candle out here. Talk about uh, big and nasty. Um, again, I think this is pretty much supported by Buffett. So I don't think he was going to let it sit on that low all day. But they did run it down to 118.25. Uh, it's back up about 128. Sales numbers were not good. Uh, when you look at that, you look at water heaters, you look at all the other stuff that kind of leads the market in the housing business. Uh, then you kind of have to look at Home Depot as being not selling to new homes so much as uh, actually uh, uh, being one that's a retrofitting old homes when new homes quit selling. Uh, I don't see that much happening, but I do think that we could see uh, lighter home sales for the next six to nine months without any problem. And I think we're starting to see just the beginning of that. Uh, with Mohawk and some of the others. So I would say um, probably not the worst. I can think of a lot of stocks that would probably get hit worse than Home Depot. Um, in fact, what is that? HD. Is that just it? HD on the symbol on that. We will look at it. Um, kind of up here on Ether. And we'll talk about this when we come back, close the show up with it. You did close below the nine-day moving average today, or the three-by-three. Three. Not a good sign. You may get a little bit more hang time, like four or five days, 
before this thing starts heading back. 193.50, er, yeah, 193.42. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we said, what we're looking for for highs in this market is a close below uh, after being mostly above uh, three by three or nine day moving average for a while. You got your close below that in Home Depot. What you really like to see is for a clear signal is that it goes a couple of days and it stays underneath it. Then it goes back above it and maybe one or two days. And then the next time it pulls down below it. And then generally that means that most of the selling at the high is over. Uh, that is uh, distribution and they're not going to try to hold the market up on it very much longer. But generally, the big destruction in these are when that pattern comes around. It's called Joe DiNapoli's double repo pattern. I really like it. Um, you don't want to bet on it happening, uh, but you do want to, when it, you do see it, you do want to react to it. But uh, if you're thinking short, I think we want to look at a lot of these others that are like that. Didn't have a lot of time to go through more of the earnings. We got more next week. I'm not going to say that there's a lot going on here in the market. Um, everybody thinks that they want to be long for uh, a possible trade deal. And I just think that uh, they are waiting for Godot and it's going to be a long time. If you ever saw the miserable play that I was forced to go to, he never shows up. Spoiler alert. And uh, if I had seen the uh, 
new uh, Avengers movie, I would give you spoilers on it too, because it's something that I have zero interest in seeing, but apparently everybody else does. Um, I, I just don't know. It seems like movies are more like roller coasters, and not a lot of there there. Cotton candy, one big mouth and you're done. I, how many people want to go back and see the movie a second time? It's not like Star Wars. There was a story to it. Or Jaws. I enjoyed that twice. I don't think that there's any reason to watch those new superhero mo movies more than once. Well, then maybe that's just me. We'll be back with uh, Tom O'Brien at 3.30. We'll be talking all about autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, the way they are powered. Because we learned a lot this week. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time.